Artem, how you doing, my friend? And and have you adjusted here to the to the time in the United States? Yeah, I'm good, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, I haven't quite adjusted fully yet. I only got in here on Sunday, but I, I am in the process. That that's why I got here so early. Uh, I I wanted to adjust to the time difference. So I see some brilliance to this call out, right? I, I, I always tell fighters that they should study the rankings, they should study the matchups, know who's available, make the UFC's job easy. And, and at times, you can get higher ranked opponents and get great opportunities for yourself by telling them who you want to fight. And, and, and also, with Cub coming off a war like he had with Duhu Choi, was part of the reasoning that you just feel after a fight like that, he reduced his ability to take the kind of power you plan to bring next Saturday night? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Cobb's been in many, many wars over the years, and he's been great to watch. But, of course, you know, it takes its toll. And after a fight like that, you know, he he's definitely he's definitely did a lot of damage. And fighting a guy like me after that uh, m- might not be the best idea. So when I saw that fight, I thought that's a great fight. You know, he gets caught a lot. He's very wild, which makes for an entertaining fight. But, you know, I, I, can, see, I can see avenues there that I can explore and... Uh, you know, uh, I feel that I could knock him out. So I, I called for it, and here we are. And, and uh, you know, initially, I thought that there was a lot of bad blood between you two. Obviously, you guys went back and forth on Twitter a little bit, and Cub, you know, kind of goes back with Conor McGregor a little bit, where they were trash-talking a little bit as well. But as I've really looked into this, it really turns out that you guys actually do have at least a professional level of respect for one another. And, and I want to play a clip. Cub Swanson was on the show just about 30 minutes ago. I want to play a clip so you could hear it of, of what Cub had to say about this matchup. I'm training like this is the toughest fight of my life. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm training for five fives, which in itself is one of the hardest things to do, train for five fives. So, um, you know, and I think he's the kind of guy that, uh, his record isn't the greatest, but he's also in the position of having two two wins back to back in the UFC, and being with um, a really great uh, team and having the best training he's ever had. So, I'm going to expect better version of him than I've seen on tape. And the situation being the main event, being five fives, so I have to expect that he's going to step it up. So. All that being said, I cannot overlook this guy. Um, I'm very confident in my ability. I trained hard, and I'll be ready. Artem, there you hear it. You know that that doesn't. I expected maybe some trash talk, things of that nature, but definitely a, a focus. Cub Swanson, your thoughts about what he said about the matchup? Um, uh, yeah, I agree. And when you say you know trash talk, you know that, that's never really been my thing. You know trash talk. You know I. I I guess when people, you know, look at Connor, sometimes they they mistake it and and they say, oh, you just have to trash talk and uh, and and that will get you things. But the message is, when you look at Connor, it's it's being yourself. You know, Connor is just being yourself. He says what he truly believes in, and, and that's what I do as well. I'm not just gonna go out of my way and, and you know just put somebody down or trash talk or say something that I don't believe in. I, everything that I say is is most likely you know backed up by facts, and, and this is what I believe in. But coming back to your question. Yeah, he's right. You know, um, that's one of the things that uh, kind of helped me get a lot of things in the UFC, and I'm not going to deny it, is the fact that I was Conor McGregor's training partner because, you know, I'm his training partner, and that raises curiosity. You know, people wonder, how come Conor is able to destroy the best guys in the world in seconds? And this guy, Artem, he's been with him for many, many years, and he's inspiring him day in and day out, and he's still there, and he looks just fine. Uh, if, if, if uh, you know, Conor is doing that, to the best guys in the world, and Artem is there. What can Artem do to the best guys in the world? Well, let's see. You know, you have to wonder no more. Uh, Saturday, April 22nd, we get to find out. And, and, and your camp does a lot of things very specific. There, there's a lot of science. There's a lot of method to, to everything you do. Uh, you know, what are, what are some of the specific things you've done this camp to bring guys in or mimic Cub and give yourself – the best looks that when that first bell rings, you know, you get your timing right away. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of things. You know, Cobb is very wild. You know, he switches stances. He's uh, quite unorthodox. Uh, you know, he, he keeps high tempo. So my main thing was, uh, you know, I was getting ready for a 20-round war. Uh, that's what I'm ready for. Um 
I, of course, I had specific training partners, both southpaws and orthodox, and guys that can switch. Uh, I did a lot of, you know, uh, wrestling training. I did a lot of jiu-jitsu training. Uh, you know, I'm just ready for everything. Th this fight, I, I feel I have to win it everywhere. I can't just go out there and solely look for a knockout. You know, if he comes into a clinch, I'm going for a takedown. If it goes to the floor, I'm, I'm going to look for submissions. I'm going to make him work just as much as he's going to make me work. Uh, and I think the rest will take care of itself. And, and, you know, going back to a little bit of your history, you know, getting to know you, and like I said, you know, the first time we talked, you telling me, look, I game plan, whatever, man, I, I, I go out there to throw, I'm a fighter first before you're, you know, you're a martial artist. I'm looking at your bio, and, and I see you've got a bachelor's in business and a master's in finance. I can't imagine being someone who works at a bank and having a cubicle or a desk or an office next to you. What what was the banker Artem Lobov like, and and how well did you fit in that environment? Quite well, you know. I've done all kinds of jobs in, in my life. You know, I, I, I washed dishes in a restaurant. Uh, then I, I became I was actually even a tandoori chef in an Indian restaurant. I worked in the bar. You know, I set up my own business before. Um, I did all kinds of things. You know, my my goal in life was always to make it because I always felt that a lot of people depended on me to make it. You know, I really want to make it for my family. I want to, you know, give my my mother, my father, my my sister, and everyone around me a good life. So that was always, you know, my main goal. And, and I I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do, but I knew I could not stop. I could not give up. I just had to push forward everywhere and anywhere. And then once I kind of saw a more clear avenue, which was MMA, well then I left everything else behind and I concentrated all my attention on this uh, but to be honest when I worked in the bank I didn't really talk much about my my uh, you know my fighting you know a lot of people didn't even really know what I do or you know on what level I do that obviously now that I left the bank I get a lot of them contacting me and you know saying oh that's great you know we didn't even realize that you did this at such high level uh, but at the time, I, I just kind of kept to myself mostly and just, you know, did my thing. You know, bank was one job, and then uh, uh, fighting was a different uh, thing. So, uh, I mean, it's an incredible story, though. And, and, you know, I say this to a lot of people in America that some of the hardest workers I know are first-generation Americans because they appreciate all the opportunity they have here. Knowing a little bit about your story, your story certainly is filled with overcoming adversity, traveling around, trying to find your way in different countries. Obviously, you've taken advantage of every single opportunity that's come your way, from education to work to now your fight career, and now you're obviously presented with the biggest opportunity you've ever had in fighting. You've got a track record of surprising people and taking advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And not only did I take advantage of all those opportunities, I have created those opportunities for myself. You know, um, I got the education, you know, I had to pay for it. So, you know, I, I worked my ass off while in school already. You know, I washed dishes, uh, I worked the weekends, I worked nights, so I would be able to pay for my education. Uh, then I had to work, you know, all the way in college. The same in MMA, you know. How did I become Conor McGregor's sparring partner? People often say that, but do you see anybody else that's his sparring partner? No, there is only me, because guess what? You know, what you see on TV, him knocking guys out, well, that's, that's exactly how it is. You know, it's not easy sparring Conor McGregor. And what happened was he always wanted to spar, and not many people put their hands up. More often than not, no one put their hands up, but I was always there. Day after day, no matter how sore I was, no matter how badly I got hurt, I came back for more, more and more and more. And eventually, there was no one else left. There was just me. So when Connor needed somebody to go corner him, when he needed somebody to go warm him up, there was no one else left. There was just me. I was the only one that survived because I was the toughest. Uh, I wanted it more than anyone else wanted it. Uh, and this is why I'm here now. This is why this opportunity is in front of me. Uh, and again, you know, getting the main event, you know, a lot of people said it like, oh, why did he get the main event? Well, guess what? You know, I always show up. When you book Artem Love of the Fight, you know he's going to be there. All the promotion that we do, you know, it's not just going to go to waste. I will be there. My word is like a diamond. It's unbreakable. If I say I'm going to be there, I will be there. If I'm not there, I am dead. And there's no doubt about that. And I saw an interview you did where you wanted this fight after watching the Doohoo Choi fight and seeing how awesome a performance it was. You've dreamed about your opportunity to be in something similar. I mean, you, mentally, you're not thinking like you're going to walk in there and knock them out. If it happens, you'll certainly take it. But mentally, you're preparing for this to be 25 minutes of, of just knockdown, drag out, exhausted, finding a way to win, much 
much like your life has been, where really nothing has come easy. Absolutely, you know. I always say, you know, I, I never quit. I've, I've, I've never tapped in a fight. I've been choked out a few times, but no man can say that he, ma he, he made me tap. No, nobody in life. You know, I always say that as long as my heart is beating, I ain't quitting. So, you know, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a big fight for me. It's going to be a hard fight, but this is the kind of fight that I can definitely win. And this is the kind of fight, like you said, it, my life has been a fight like that. So, you know, I have a lot of experience dealing with fights just like that. Well, I'll tell you, Artem, you, you've got a personal story that's very inspiring, and, and, and nobody can count you out in any fight you're in, man. Congratulations on this opportunity. Thank you so much for taking some time. I know you're still adjusting to the time here. I, I really appreciate you taking some time to talk to us about your fight. We'll be looking forward to it. two weeks. I'll be there in Nashville. Honored to call it as always, man. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.